right, so let's look at the social uh, stratification. Classes and castes. During the time of the Portuguese rule, the, presi the preseiros or Portuguese landowners formed the wealthiest and most powerful classes. Um, below them were the mestizos, who of whose uh, were below them were the mestizos, those of mixed African and Portuguese descent, and at the bottom were Africans who constituted the vast majority of the population. Despite the international the internal diversity of the population, which is composed of various cultural and linguistic groups, ethnicity has never been a major factor in social status. Since independence, most Portuguese have left the country. Today, it is with ex exception. Today, it's today with the exception of tiny ruling elite. Nearly everyone in the country is poor. Let's look at the symbols of, strat of, of social stratification. The way people dress reflects the, uh, the, uh, conf the confluence of different cultures as well as the individual's economic standing. Uh, in the cities, men wear western style suits to go to work. Women wear western style dresses made from fabric with brightly colored African patterns. Throughout the country, men have for the most part replaced the traditional loit cloth with t-shirts and dashikis. Women in the rural areas, however, generally have kept their traditional garb of long strips of fabric that are wrapped around their body, under their arms and over one shoulder. They also have retained the traditional headscarf or turban. Young people almost exclusively wear western clothing except for the extremely indigent. Despite the European and American influence of fashion, some styles such as the blue jeans and short skirts have not been adopted. Dress also can be a marker of ethnic identity. Muslims in the north wear traditional long white robes and head coverings. Asian men wear uh, two-piece uh, cotton uh, suits, whereas Asian women dress in black or colored silk dresses. La language also can be an indicator of social economic standing. Portuguese is Portuguese is learned in school and is therefore the language of the privileged elite. It is almost entirely unheard outside of the cities. Good. <laughs> Let's move on to the political life. The government, the government uh, adopted in 1990, declared Mozambique a multi-party democracy or. De multi-party republic. The 250 members of the Cameo uh, Assembly all of the republic are elected by the universal suffrage. The president is both the chief of state and head of government and is elected for a five-year term with a maximum limit of three terms. Let's look at the leadership and political officials. While Mozambique is officially a multi uh, uh, party democracy, the government is still dominated by two main parties, Frelimo and the Rema, Rema, Renamo. The third party, which did not win any seats in the legis legislature in 1999 elections, is called the Democratic Union. Frelimo, the, the ruling party from independence through the end of the civil war, suffered from infighting among its leaders. Both Frelimo and Renamo took their leaders from workers in the independence movement while they were uh, while they were varying levels while they were varying levels of education among politicians almost all have studied abroad in portugal and uh, all other european countries let's look at the social problems and control crime is a growing problem particularly in the cities which has been flooded with poor unemployed um, unemployed men from the countryside seeking work the justice system was fashioned. The justice system was fashioned after the Portuguese model. However, without enough qualified judges and lawyers, the system could not function well. So Frelimo modified it, because prison facilities could not accommodate the large numbers of criminals. And government, uh, the government established rehabilitation camps, usually farms, for minor offender and alcoholics. Frelimo considered alcoholism a crime. Uh, Frelimo also set up vigilant uh, groups of citizens to turn in alcoholics and anti-government individuals. One of the most suppressing problems is human rights violations 
on the part of law enforcement agents and the mistreatment of criminals and suspects. Let's look at the military activity. Under Freli Moore, the police force was nationally controlled with local divisions in each town. Freli Moore also put in place the National Service of Popular Security, an arm of the, of, of the police force that deals with terrorism and sabotage. When peace accords were signed in 1992, Freli Moore had an estimated 70,000 troops and Rionamo had 20,000. These, those fighters were compelled to turn in their weapons and a new national force, the Mozambican Defense Force, was established, including 15,000 men from each party. Let's look at the social welfare and change programs. Social welfare comes primarily from, the, from within the family, which cares independently for its own elders and an ailing, ailing member. Other aid comes from international charitable organizations. Let's look at the non-government organization and other so associations. Since the peace treaties were signed, the United Nations has played a large role in peacekeeping process. It stationed almost 8,000 people who were responsible for supervising the dismantling and rebuilding of the armies over 1994 elections to ensure that they were fair and democratic and helped return almost 2 million refugees at the, uh, to their homes. As part of the last uh, project, the United Nations aided in the construction of water systems, roads, schools and clinics. The International Organization for Ma Migration also helped with the repat repatriation process. One of the biggest problems is the presence of landmines left over from the war. It's estimated that up to 2 million were buried. The United Nations collaborated with USAID, with USAID and a Norwegian group to help find and defuse them. Sad. The refugee situation was create, has created another crisis in form of legends of abandoned street children particularly in Maputo, where there are a number of estimated half a million. Many volunteer aid organizations work with orphans and abandoned children to care for them and educate them to be self-sufficient. Among these groups are the Save the Children and the Institute of International Cooperation and Development. The World Food Program buys grain grown in the areas of the country where production exceeds um, exceeds use and, re and redistributes it in other areas. Let's look at the gender roles. Division of labor by gender. The constitution guarantees all citizens the right to work, but women often face obstacles when they seek non-traditional employment. Women have historically been responsible for domestic tasks. In towns and cities, they generally are confined to the home, whereas in rural areas, they play an important role in the agricultural labor force. The Organization of, Mo of Mozambican Women, or OMM, which works, for, which works to promote women's rights, has implemented programs to teach women to sew and crochet and sell the products they produce for cash. How about adult education? I think that would be a good thing. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, the relative status of women and men. According to the constitution, men and women have equal rights. However, both traditional and colonial attitudes keep women in somewhat sub sub subordinate positions, even within the ranks of Relimo, which declared itself a, prop a proponent of women's rights. Women have not attained positions of power. Let's look at marriage, family, and kinship. A polygamy is uh, traditionally practiced and until recently was quite common. In, 18, in 1981, Frelimo Fre instituted a law designed in conjunction with OMM that established a monogamous marriage and by which both spouses share ownership of property and decisions about where to live. The law also entitled women to... Um, to a means of maintenance and specified the responsibilities of fathers in financially supporting their children. Marriage celebrations involve 
feasting, music, and dancing. Let's look at the domestic unit. The tradition of family includes several generations living together under one roof. However, in many areas, the family structure has been dismantled by civil war, which took many lives, compelled many men to uh, immigrate from rural areas to the cities or to the neighboring countries, and left large numbers of children orphaned and abandoned. Let's look at the inheritance. Tribes north of the Zambezi River follow a matrilineal model of inheritance. They trace their ancestry through their mother's side, and at marriage, the women, the wom the man becomes part of the woman's family. In the south, the model is patrilineal. Let's look at the kin groups. Uh, south of the Zambezi River, tribes follow a patrilineal descent. To the north, kin's kin ties are established through the mother's line. Let's move on to socialization, infant care. Young children rarely are separated from their mothers. It's customary for women to tie their babies on their backs with a, a strip of cloth and take them along when they work in the fields. Child rearing and education. Children are treated with affectionate but are expected to defer to their elders and often begin to work at a young age after the civil war. As many as half a million children were left without families. Many of these children wander Maputo and other cities and stay alive by stealing or selling small items on the street. Relief organizations have alleviated the problem somewhat by caring for and educating children and reuniting families. This is really sad. Because of the Portuguese legacy of suppressing education in colonies, Mozambique was Mozambique was estimated to have a literacy rate of only 10% when it gained independence in 1975. The first post-independence government made, made rising this number a priority and instituted compulsory education for children between the ages of 6 to 12. The program was largely disrupted by the civil war. When the war ended in 1995, the literacy rate was 40% and 60% of the primary school children were in school. Only 7% of children were enrolled at the secondary school at the secondary level. Even the peace treaties since the peace treaties were signed, these numbers have begun increasing. But the destruction of many schools, many school buildings and lack of trained and educated teachers have left the country with a problem that will not be soon eradicated. Let's look at the higher education. There are three institutes of higher education that, that enrolled a total of 7,000 students in 1995. Ecuador um, in Maputo is the only university. Let's look at the um, uh, ethics. Greeting are very lengthy and involve inquiring into the health of each other's family, People generally stand close together and are physically affectionate. Let's move on to religion. The native religion is animism. Arab traders brought Islam in the area. The Portuguese brought Christianity. Historically, the introduction of, his, of, his, of Christianity by both uh, Catholic and Portuguese missionaries was a mixed blessing. While their teachings conflicted with the traditional way of life, they offered Mozambique access to health care and an education as the colonial portuguese government did not provide these things okay today the constitution ensures religious freedom and separation of church and state however when Frelimor took power it expressed hostility towards roman catholicism viewing it as a portuguese tool of oppression 20 to 30 percent of the population is christian and 10 percent follows islam Islam is most prevalent near the northern coast. Many people who are there to Christianity or Islam still practice traditional religion. About two-thirds of the population follows uh, animist rituals and customs. The traditional belief system places a high importance on a connection with one's ancestors as well as the spirit world. Let's look at the religious practices. The animist uh, practiced in uh, Mozambique includes uh, sources, wise men and women, and witch doctors, all traditional healers. 
who are capable of communicating with spirits and act as go-betweens for the rest of the people. These healers are well are versed in the medic medicinal med uses of local plants as well as spiritual healing. So why are they referred to as witch doctors? Witch doctors or traditional healers? How do those two equate? Let's move on to rituals and holy places. Many unmissed rituals involve music and dance. For example, Makonde men perform a dance that involves large masks called mapikos. The masks are carved in secret and present demons. Women are not allowed to touch them. The dance which is performed to the accompaniment of drums and wind instruments enacts a repeated attack on villagers by the demons that is a ritual that lasts for many hours. All right, let's move on to clinic and medicine. When independence was won in 1975, the government created a free nationalized healthcare system, the same time banning private practice. This resulted in an exodus of the majority of the doctors uh, of the country's doctors. The government's goal was to improve health care through uh, preventive medicine, employing nurses to give vaccines and educate the population about sanitation and other basic health care measures. Many of the clinics it established, however, were destroyed in the civil war. Since the war ended, it has been invest it has invested a large amount of money in rebuilding clinics and has done away with the law prohibiting private practice in an effort to increase the number of doctors. A shortage of supplies and trained personnel was exacerbated by the destruction caused by the civil war. The main health uh, threats are sleeping sickness transmitted by the uh, sissy fly and malaria. Life expectancy is 47 years for men and 50 years for women. The infant mortality rate is 130 per, per thousand, which is the highest in the world. I wonder if that's still this, this, the case right now. Many people rely on traditional herbal medicines and healing methods under the guidance of village healers in combination with the little health care and medicine the government provides. AIDS uh, or HIV is a growing problem in Maputo and other urban centers. The infection rate is about 10%. Outside the cities, the rate is 17% for low-risk groups and 27% for high-risk groups. While these numbers are lower than those in some surrounding areas, AIDS is a major concern and there is a, is a threat to the nation's future. future. Let's look at the circular celebrations. The major holidays are New Year's um, Day on January the 1st, Heroes Day on February the 3rd, Women's Day on April the 7th, um, Workers Day on May the 1st, Independence Day on June the 25th, the anniversary of, of the end of the armed struggle is on the September the 7th, and the anniversary of the opening of the armed struggle is on September the 25th, and Family Day and uh 25th december uh, let's look at the arts and humanities support of the arts there is a national traditional arts company called the nambu productions as well as a national dance company both of which perform contemporary productions based on traditional forms the frelimo government also established a national institute of culture that collects and preserves traditional crafts music stories and myths Let's look at the literature. Liter literally production has been limited because of the poverty and low liter literacy rate. There is a strong oral tradition of storytelling and many of the country's contemporary writers draw, draw on that tradition. Literally writing was historically been tied to resistance to Portuguese colonialism and for that reason has largely was largely censored before independence. Rice writers such as Louis Bernardo uh, were imprisoned for their work. Uh, Bernardo was is is uh, Homwana. Homwana is a documentary filmmaker. Um, oh, Homwana was imprisoned uh, for his work. Homwana is also a documentary filmmaker, but he's best known for his book "We Killed Mandy Dog," which combines personal and culture. Uh, auto, uh, autobiography. Uh, 
Virtually all the poets and writers use the colonial Portuguese language for their medium. The poet Jose sees Portuguese, uh, particularly with the infusion of local African words, uh, as an important part of the nation's cultural heritage and is a proponent, is a proponent of retaining Oh, uh, of retaining it as a national language because of the lack of education and other disadvantages women have been underrepresented in the lit literally the literally realm one exception is naomi is naomi de souza who is known as the mother of mozambican writers she began writing in the 1950s and 1960s she was the only med seeker writing in portuguese portuguese in africa she takes on the subject of African women and their work and has become a voice for the women in the country. Let's look at the uh, graphic arts. Mozambique is also known for the traditional sculpture and wood carving produced by the Makonde people in the north. Using hardwoods, primary mahogany, ebony and ironwood, the Makonde fashion masks and sculptures known as family trees, large depictions of various figures that tell stories of generations. Mozambique also has produced several well-known contemporary artists, including Mal Malang Malagatana and Valente, whose large uh, canvases depict conflict between colonial culture and native culture. Two contemporary sculptures and Al Nkantunga and uh, Shik Shisano. Let's look at the uh, performance uh, performance art. The country has a long uh, musical tradition. Song serves several purposes, including religious expression, the relating of current events, and making fun of neighbors. It's customary for musicians to make their own instruments. Drums have wooden basses covering with stretched animal skin. Wind instruments are known as lumpembe, are used by the Makonde tribe, are made from animal horns, wood, and girds. The marimba, a kind of xylophone that has been adopted in Western music, originated in Mozambique, where it is popular with the choppy in the south. Choppy musicians also use the mbira, strips of metal attached to a hollow box and plucked with their fingers. The musical style is similar to West Indian calypso and reggae. A contemporary form of music called a marambeter was developed in the cities and draws on traditional and complex myths. There are elaborate, well developed traditions of dance throughout the country. Dances often have religious significance. The Chopi perform a hunting dance in which they dress in lion skin and monkey tails, carry spears and swords, act as battles. Makua men in the north dance on a two foot tall sl uh, slits hopping around the village for hours, be decked in colorful outfits and masks. On Mozambique Island, a form of dance practiced by women combines complex steps and rope jumping. Storytelling is another tradition art form. The national culture is rich in tales, proverbs, myths, and jokes that have been passed down from generation to generation. The state, let's look at the state of physical and social sciences. Facilities for the physical and social sciences are virtually non-existent. However, Maputo has a museum of national history that spe uh, specifies in uh, that specializes in natural history and ethno and ethnography, as well as uh, uh, Freli Freli a museum for minerals and history museum for military affairs. The town of Ilhar da the in Hulk in Hacker is home to a marine biology museum. All right, folks, uh, this is it. We've come to the end of our uh, 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 fun and interesting facts about this beautiful country of Mozambique. I hope that um, uh, you've learned a thing or two. Um, I've uh, actually learned quite a lot. Once again, this was read to you by yours truly, Christine, courtesy of Exhibit Africa. Uh, Ubuntu initiative compiled by everyculture.com until our next video ciao for now we're gonna be moving on to the letter N so see you on our next video bye for now